Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to go over energy responsible considerations in rocket stove and cob bench designs for earthen dwellings. And I'm calling it responsible considerations instead of efficiency because energy efficiency is not only a relative term but sometimes in order to achieve efficiency the resource inputs are so huge that there's no way that you can justify or offset the actual energy requirements of the system in the first place. So I'm choosing the word responsible instead. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so part one, the heat transfer from the flue to the bench. I just drew this up here quickly. It's a little rocket stove with a, a pipe here. So here's where the fuel goes in and the combustion and the barrel and then the cob bench and then either a T or an elbow here and the stack. And I'll draw a little cross section here of a cob bench. With the pipe going down the middle right here. So, the main problem with this design is that cob shrinks a little bit when it dries. So, if this is the wall of the pipe, when the cob is packed wet, then it's touching the pipe. But after the cob dries, it pulls away from the pipe a little bit and it leaves an air space. So, the heat that does manage to transfer through this smooth pipe has to then turn into radiant optical heat and cross this small zone of insulation and then reabsorb as conductive molecular heat into the mass behind it. And the surface area of the pipe is actually something that could use a great improvement. So, I'm going to draw something here that has been used in industry for over 200 years and it's called a checker brick. So the size of refractory chimney bricks is four and a half inches by nine inches and the typical thickness of them is two and a half inches. So this would be the bottom of the channel and we'll go up two bricks high on each side. Like that. Now, so if this is four and a half and this is nine, then I've got thirteen and a half inches from end to end, and these are two and a half inches on their sides, so I have to subtract five, and I've got eight and a half inches here inside my flue. Now, the fun part. I'll do the expanded view here. So the base two and a half inches with the brick joints here and the first row and here the same thing. The first row will be a full brick here and a half a brick here and so on. So the checker bricks are actually bricks that run in the opposite orientation to the flow of the flue gases. So my first checker brick I'll put in here. Like that. And it will extend through to the inside like that. And I'll stagger that down and I'll put one here on this side. So if we stagger these top and bottom, so I'll put another one up here and etc. all the way down the length of the cob bench, then I'm increasing the surface area that will be exposed to the hot flue gases as they're traveling past. The other thing I'd like to mention is the density of this material. These used chimney bricks have a denser um, composition than cob, so they have more of an ability to absorb and more of an ability to store heat than cob does. And there's a pipe you can buy from a, a hardware store or lumber yard <clears throat> that's a ducting for hot air furnaces. And if you put that pipe like this, 
then it can run the length of the cob bench and it can provide a crown arch so that when the cob is packed to it, it has some structural integrity. So basically, this area here doesn't really have the ability to absorb much heat, which is more of the traditional way that these are built. But the, the main feature of this is this area here that's made of bricks. And it can certainly be made of salvaged bricks. They don't have to be brand new. And this ducting here is usually for like a six inch uh, duct. And the lengths are usually four or five feet long. And they have little clips in them. So when you buy them, they're not usually connected and you have to fold them together to make them clip. So they're perfect. You can just unfold them a little bit more. And there's your arch that you can set on top of these bricks and run the length of the, of the cob uh, bench. All right, let's have a little look here at uh, old school combustion engineering and heat transfer. Look at these elaborate methods of using stacks of bricks to transfer heat from waste flue gases to combustion air sources or ventilation air sources in heat exchangers. Here's a nice little illustration here. Here's a blast furnace from a metal foundry. Look at the amount of infrastructure that was used. It's even a greater percentage of the entire structure than the furnace itself. And this is where the downdraft waste heat is recuperated through all these rows of checker bricks. And here is a passage to the actual stack, which is the chimney that rises up above the uh, factory structure. So you can see the amount of attention that was paid to recuperating heat and the way it was recuperated through stacks of bricks. Here's a great example of a turn of the century factory. Here's the furnace here and there's the burner ports and these brick channels here bring the preheated combustion air down into the burner ports and the flue gases exit the furnace through here and the downdraft of the flue gases goes through the checker bricks and then out through these passages and up through the stacks to the chimneys on the outside of the building and you can see by the height of that person standing there that these checker brick structures are at least 25 feet high. So they put a huge amount of emphasis on the infrastructure to recover waste heat. And the last thing I'll mention is if you want to go crazy then you can pile a whole bunch of rocks in here amongst your cob like good heavy igneous rocks like granite because the density of that material is much much more than the surrounding cob so it has the ability to store much more heat than the cob does. Especially if the cob is mixed with straw. It has, you know, it's probably about 70 pounds per cubic foot, whereas things like granite and heavier rocks are up over 140. Okay, part two, heat transfer from the bench to the living space. All right, so if this is the mass here, The caloric or available heat energy that's stored in the mass depends on its density. And yes, stored energy is measured in calories. So it's called caloric heat. So the density of this material, if it was styrofoam, it of course wouldn't be able to radiate much heat because it wouldn't be storing any heat. But cob and earthen materials have a certain amount of density. And the heat energy inside here is vibrating molecules bumping into each other. And once they reach the surface, they have to be able to radiate out as optical radiant heat. So this happens on a microscopic level. So efficiency can be improved simply by looking at the outside of the density and its ability to radiate heat. So it all comes down to this area right here, the surface, and the ability of that surface to radiate heat depends on two things. How much surface area is available and what color it is. So first we'll look at surface area. If we have a shiny paint on the outside of a surface, then microscopically it just looks like a shiny surface. If we spray paint this with uh, flat paint, 
that's stippled or has some texture to it, then we wind up with a surface area that looks like this to a molecule. It's like a mountain range. And if you were actually to take this and stretch it out, it would be a huge surface area. And also, when we go back to our mass, our structure here, we can actually increase the surface area of our structure by doing something like this. And putting curves in our mass, which is really easy to do with Cobb because it's so maneuverable when it's being formed. So this will increase the surface area, and this will increase the surface area. So there's a lot more available surface for radiant heat to migrate away from the mass. Now the next thing that's very important is the color. And I've looked at about 80% of the pictures that I've seen of cob benches. Uh, the, the plastering on the cob is beautifully smooth and tends to be white or a light cream color. And a smooth surface is not good for radiating heat and lighter colors are not good either. In fact, around the turn of the century, old apartment buildings and houses would quite often have a hot water boiler in the basement, and they would have uh, cast iron radiators under every window in each room. And someone would come along and paint them white, and then the room would be impossible to heat. You could go up and feel the radiator, and it would feel warm to the touch, but because it was painted white, it didn't have the ability to radiate any heat. So the color is very important. Dark colors enable this to occur. Lighter colors prevent it from occurring. And nobody wants a black cob house, but if it was painted black, it would be way more efficient, way easier to heat. And the third thing I want to mention here is the circulation of the heated air around the living space using convection currents. So. I'm going to draw a floor and an outside wall, and I'm going to draw a cob bench. And here's its uh, heat transfer along here. And if this cob building has a square ceiling, then the, the heat that's rising up off of here hits the ceiling. And it kind of plumes out in different directions and makes all these circular eddies before it actually decides it needs to go this way. Along the ceiling, down the other outside wall, and across the floor, returning as cold air. The, the best the possible design for this would be to have little vents along the floor and have a channel in behind here and holes along the top. So, in, so that the vacuum created here by the hot air rising will pull the cold air in and you'll have really good circulation and additional heat transfer. So that's best case scenario. Also another thing to consider is that if the ceiling above the cob bench had a curved approach to it, then it's much easier for the rising air currents to start to flow across the room. There's always these little current eddies that happen when there's airflow against any surface because of the friction, but that actually helps to buffer it and it keeps the main airflow away from the outside wall. So having a curve above here can help, and having a return and a circulation system inside the mass can help as well. Something else I'll mention is that people tend to put fabric coverings or cushions on the cob benches, which actually insulates them and prevents them from being able to radiate heat from those surfaces. So a, a good rule of thumb is, before you go to bed at night, take the coverings off the bench, and you'll get a much better heat transfer during the night. Okay, just a quick recap here for considerations for earth and home designs. Increase the surface area for heat transfer in the flue. Increase the surface area and darken the color for heat transfer from the mass into the living space. And consider the convection circulation and the things that might impede it, like the placement of furniture and partition walls and that sort of thing. 
and be sure to check out my video on improvements to rocket stove designs because the two kind of go together, the mass heater and the rocket stove. Alright, thanks for watching.